Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Michael. I'm going to be your, uh, or I'll be presenting the session this afternoon. We're looking at importing transactions into CH50 Cloud accounts. This can be a potent, potentially a big time saver for you going forward. So hopefully after today's session, you'll learn what, what import can be used for, and you'll start spotting those opportunities going forward when you could potentially use import to save yourself some time. Now the session should last, probably the demo is going to last in the region of about half an hour. We'll then hang around for questions. I've got Jackie assisting me today, so she'll be in the background answering any questions that you might have. Keep them coming and keep her busy. Now as normal, you will be in listen-only mode, so you don't need a microphone for these sessions, but if you have one, it will automatically be muted and you'll find you can't unmute yourself. So any questions, you will need to submit them via the questions panel. If you can't currently see that, all you need to do on your toolbar on the right hand side is click the little icon, looks like a speech bubble containing a question mark, you'll get the little box in the bottom right hand corner then, which you can show or hide at any point during the session, so you'll have it, you'll have it available to you throughout. Uh, and then any comments or questions you have, just pop them in there. Potentially a busy session today, we've got just over 200 registered for today, uh, we'll see how many actually join us. Uh, hopefully they'll come in very soon because we're about to get started. So this is our agenda for around about the next half hour or so. So I'm going to explain what the more about the import, give you a bit of an introduction to it and why you might use it. We'll look at the process of preparing your data, so what's involved in that so that you can then import that. We'll look at the data import wizard and we've got quite a few files that I'm going to use in today's session uh, just to run through that just so you can see the wizard and try and sort of familiarize you with the process itself. So we'll be running through it five or six times today just to try and uh, almost like so you can see the steps and you'll be aware of what's involved. We're going to look at troubleshooting. So obviously not everything goes according to plan and quite commonly when you first start importing you probably come across the odd error or two. Uh, some are very very common so we'll point out the obvious ones and if you do have an error what you need to do about that. For those of you that some of you may be aware that version 28.1 will be coming very soon. There's a couple of enhancements in the import area so we'll explain what those are. I'll be using version 28.1 as well today it's not out yet, but it will be very soon. Not a, not a definite date for that yet, but it will be coming soon. So we'll explain the enhancements, the two enhancements that you've got in the import area. We'll explain more about the upcoming webinars, just to give you an idea of some of the topics we've got coming up over the next few weeks. And then as normal, we'll hang around for questions. Well, keep your questions coming, keep Jackie busy. Uh, I should just be tapping away in the background, answering any questions that you have, whether that's giving you an answer or maybe pointing in the direction of the information that's available within our help center. Right, okay, let's get started. So we're going to start with a little bit of background with regard to importing transactions and why you might use it. Well, first of all, importing has two uses. One is to add new data into your accounts. Now that can be used for both adding new records and adding new transactions and it's the transactions element that we're going to be looking at in today's session. The second use is to update existing data. Now that can only be used to update existing data on the record side of things. So if you wanted to, you know, things like update your credit limits on your customer records, if you've got those that information available, you could import it Say if you're going through the records one at a time, almost like a batch, a batch change as well. So a number of options to, to crack the same nut in that instance. But it's specifically adding new data and transactions that we're going to be looking at today. Now, benefits-wise, it is going to save you time. Yes, there's a few steps involved, but once you're used to those steps and you understand them, then it's going to be quite quick. And don't be scared to slow me down today, because once I get started, I'll be flying through that wizard, because uh, it's the same, same steps time and time again. If there's anything you don't understand, just pop a comment or a question in there, and we'll, we'll try and pick that up for you. It also helps to avoid mistakes as well. So if you've ever been provided with like a list of expenses or, 
you know, things like a list of names and addresses. If you import that information, if it's already on the likes of an Excel spreadsheet, for instance, if you import that, whatever's in the import file, that's what gets popped into your accounts. Rather than you sitting there typing that information in, potentially getting your typo, etc. What can you import? Well, again, splitting it into two areas, you can, on the record side, you can import customers, suppliers, nominal accounts, and on the nominal accounts as well, that includes budget values, if you are using the standard budgeting value option, uh, standard budgets option. Uh, you can import product records, project records, and also fixed assets as well. For transactions, audit trail transactions, so all of those transactions that appear within your transactions list, invoices, credits, bank payments, receipts, journals, uh, all of them, they can be imported. That's what we're going to concentrate on today, audit trail transactions. I think if you understand any of these import options as well, and you, you, you familiarise yourself with the wizard, then really you'd probably be able to import anything then yourself. They're very, very similar, but I want to concentrate on audit trail transactions today. You can also import project only transactions, stock take information, and also stock transactions. Now, some of these options, some of you won't have available to you. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. For instance, if you're on the essentials level of the software, you wouldn't have the fixed assets option or the project options. Everyone will have customer suppliers and of course audit trail transactions, which is, as I say, that's the that's the one of the reasons I want to concentrate on that one today. Alana, you mentioned there, uh, can you import transactions without having to get other users to log out? Uh, you can't currently. You've you've got to get other users to log out to be able to do that. Uh, so that would be it's what you would term a, a program exclusive request. So you would need to get others to log out to be able to do that. But it is a very quick process, which you'll, you'll see in the demonstration today. Now, as far as preparing your data is concerned, you've got, you've got two options. One is to obviously use your own file. So if you've created your own spreadsheet, you've got things like your transactional information in there, you can import that. And as we work through the, the data import wizard, which we'll see in a moment, uh, it's just a case of mapping everything or mapping your columns to the information that's required by Siege. The other option, and I'm going to show you both options in the session today, is to use one of the Siege import templates. Now, the easiest way to access the import templates is directly from within your software. They should be installed by default. So I'm going to quickly show you that one, how you would go about accessing them. So I'll just quickly switch to my desktop. I'm going to go into the file menu and then import. And on step one, you get the welcome message. And in the second paragraph there, you've got this link. Clicking that will take you into the folder where the standard Sage import templates are held. So these are all XLS files. So we'll work with just, I think, all versions of Excel because they're XLS. And we'll have a look at those in just a moment. So we'll be going back and forwards between files that I've, I've already completed, I've got information in them, uh, and also some files I've just created myself. So that's how you would access that, just to confirm that. I'm sure someone will still ask it at some point. It's into file at the top, import, and then in the second paragraph where it says here, just give it a click and it should take you into the right folder. So this is the one we're going to be using today, the audit transaction, or sorry, audit trail transaction full template. Now these will be flagged as read only as well. So if you are going to use them, you just either need to copy them and rename them. So these ones will be protected just so that you don't override them. Right, let's pop back to the slides just for a moment. So as I say, you've got those two options, import template, which you'll see when I go through that option today, it's much easier when you're working through the wizard. 
or you can use your own file. Okay, so we're now gonna start working through some examples. What I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you the Excel file itself. And there can be loads of re loads of sort of uses for importing audit trail transactions. It could be just be general transactions. I think initially when you see this, you'll probably think, oh, well, what about things like standing orders and direct debits? or so those recurring entries that you have, rather than, you know, uh, manually sitting there keying them in each month, pop them on a spreadsheet. Use the template, pop the information on there, and just you might need to change the dates here and there, even the values here and there. But you then just import that information as opposed to sitting keying that in. It might be salary information, so payroll information, list of expenses. Can you get someone to fill in an expenses spreadsheet for you? Maybe transactions generated by other software, maybe things like year end adjustments from your accountant rather than them giving you a list of adjustments to post into your accounts could you just give them a list of the or give them a copy of the CH import template get them to fill it in for you you just import that as opposed to sitting there manually keying in the information so we're going to run through the data import wizard we'll run through all all, all of the steps we'll run through it a few times as well just to try and familiarize you with it Right, let's get back to my screen. Now, at the moment, I'm just, I'm almost in a blank company at this stage. Now I've got some customers set up. I've got some suppliers set up. You'll see all of these accounts have a zero balance. And if I pop into transactions, there's nothing there. And all I wanna, the reason I've done that is just to really emphasize how quick you can bring information in. So we started the webinar just over 10 minutes ago. You'll see that I can get transactions into my account very, very quickly. Now we're going to start, these are the files I'm going to be using today, and I'm going to start with this one. It's a list of audit trail transactions, and I've used the template for this one. So if I open it up, this is essentially what the template will look like. So basically it's an Excel file and it's got some headings along the top. So for each transaction that you're going to be importing in this case, you enter essentially your complete one row. So as you can see in this one, I've got, goes down to row 101. So bearing in mind, I've got titles at the top. I've got a hundred transactions on this one. Now there's a mixture of transactions on here. I've got a BP transaction, so bank payments. I've got a bank receipts. I've got an SI transaction, a PI transaction, so sales invoice, purchase invoice. Now the, I must stress with these ones as well, these are equivalent of a batch transaction. They're not, you can't import into the invoices list or the purchase orders list or the sales orders list. They are importing similar to you manually entering a batch transaction. We've got journals in amongst it. Same rules apply for journals as when you're entering them manually. So journals, the must balance, the debits must equal the credits. And they must agree on the same date as well. So as you can see from these two lines, I've got one GC, one GD. It doesn't matter that they have the same, same number of credits as debits. You might have one credit and 10 debits that up to this add up to the same value. But the, the, the overall value has got to be the same for the dates that have been used. So we've got a number of transaction types. Now, coming back to the titles along the top, you'll see some of them are in this sort of turquoise aqua color. And that means it's a required field. So you've got to have something in that column for each row, for, so for each transaction you enter. The ones in yellow are optional. So as you can see, department code, it's yellow. I don't need to have anything in that column if I want to import. Some columns, in my case, just completely blank. I'm not going to even try and import that information. But I've got to have something entered in each of those turquoise columns. Now you'll see there's a little uh, comment attached to each box as well, signified by that little red triangle in the top corner of the cell. If you just hover your mouse over the relevant title, it will bring up the comment box and it will tell you what information or give you more information about what, what that sort of information or what's required for that specific field. So for the type column, it's telling me I must complete this field, it's a required field. And it's the, in this case, it's the 
code identifying the type of transaction. It's letters only. Tells me restrictions, it must match a Sage accounts transaction type. And also it'll give you a list of the transaction types that you can import. And Brian, you've just asked there, can you import sales receipts? So you can't import sales receipts as such. So you'll notice on this, this drop down, if we come back to the, uh, yeah. So on the comments box, I don't know if you can make that out. So it'll tell you, you, you it says sales receipt on account. So if you've got an SR transaction, or for that matter, a purchase payment, a PP, you've got to change those to become a payment on account. So either an, you need to change it to an SA or a PA, depending on the type of transaction that it is. You just need to be aware of that one. I'll try and pick that up later on in the troubleshooting section as well. Uh, Debbie, interesting question from you, and I'm going to come back to your question right at the end when we talk about 28.1. Debbie's asking about will funds appear on our template? In fact, I'll answer that now. Uh, not yet, but it will do soon. So 28.1. I think Jackie's just answered that for more as well. So I'm going to show you that a little bit later on as well, because it is one of the one of the enhancements for 28.1 that we've, we're introducing, which again, not out yet, but it will be available soon. Anyway, these are the this is the information that I'm going to import. So I've got 100 transactions here. Now you need to make sure you've got the import file closed. It's one one thing that potentially will catch you out. You might have it left open. When it tries, you try to select the import file, let's see it's it's in use. Right. Okay, let's get importing. So file down to import. Just click yes if you've got any other windows open, and then we're into the data import wizard. So step one is the welcome. So remember, this is the link for downloading the or accessing the templates. On step one, it does include the backup option. I would always encourage you to take a backup at this stage. Follow that through. If you import, maybe import the wrong file. The only way you can really undo that is either deleting the transactions or manually reversing them or whatever it is that you, you've imported. But the better way to do it is if you've taken a backup at this stage is then literally simply to restore that backup that you've taken at this point. So take your backup. I'm gonna skip past it just to save time. We click next. It then prompts us for the data type. Now we're gonna trail, choose audit trail transactions. Now, if anyone's following this through and you're thinking I haven't got all of these options, again, it'll come down to your the level of the software that you're running. So again, if you're on essentials, you won't have the project options, for instance, you won't have the fixed assets option. And nobody yet will have this audit trail transactions grouped option either. So again, that's one of the new enhancements that we're introducing in 28.1. So just to make sure you're following through, I'm gonna choose audit trail transactions. I'll click next. And then we need to choose what is it we're importing. So what's the file? Is it a CSV file? Or probably more likely these days, probably be an Excel file. So I'm gonna stick with Excel files for the time being. So Excel, click browse. And then it's just a case of browsing through. So on my desktop, I've got my import files folder. And there's the file that we're going to import, the one that we just looked at containing those 100 transactions. So click open. Now I'm using the template and the first row in my Excel spreadsheet, it does contain headings. So leave the box, I'm going to leave that box ticked. I'll explain, I'll show you the various options as we go through the various examples. So I click next, and it takes me onto the field mappings option. Now, because I'm using the template, everything is mapped that I need to, to have mapped. So the imported field, this refers to the, essentially those column headings in my import file. So because I'm using the template, it's got the right headings in there. So it maps it automatically. If I'd use my own file, or maybe I've used the import template, but I've renamed some of those headings, what I would need to say is, right, 
the file type that Sage is looking for is contained in whichever, whatever I've called the column heading. Now you must map the ones that have an asterisk in the required column. The others, equivalent of those yellow column headings in the import template, you don't have to map those if you don't want to. It'll just not import anything, but you must map all of the required fields. I then click next and then click import. Now it'll do two passes. You probably didn't really see that on mine because it's it's that, literally that quick. The first pass is reading the information that's in your import file and validating it. The second pass is when it's writing the information into your accounts. So it does the two passes on that. If you've got a massive file that you're importing, then yes, it may take a little bit longer than my 100 transactions, for instance. So it's telling me at this point, this is these are the records that have been imported. I'm just going to click close. And if I pop into transactions, I've now got, well, I've got 100 transactions at this point. So that's how quick it can be to pull that information in. Records, if you were going down that route as well, pretty much exactly the same, just as quick. Right, okay, let's run through another example. So this time I've got salary journals, and again, I've used the template. So just double click it. Again, you can see I've used the template. I've got my column headings, the appropriate colors on there, and I've got the information entered. Now for journals, if you are doing journals, one thing to be aware of is that the account reference and the nominal account reference, it needs to be the same. So you'll put your nominal code in both columns. So we've got the date in there, we've got our net amount, tax code T9 on these journals, and then our tax amount is zero. So nice and simple for this one. Again, those journals could have been mixed in in amongst the other the other file as well, if needed. Right, again, make sure you close the file and then we'll go back to Sage and we'll run through the import one more time. So file, down to import. And then again, it's just a case of working through that wizard. So I'm gonna skip past step one, do take that back up. Don't follow what I'm doing then, skipping past it. Just take that back up, click next, Choose what it is you want to import. So again, we're sticking with audit trail transactions. Browse for your file. It does contain headings. Okay, next. All the mapping is done for me. And then import. Again, it whizzes through. <coughs> excuse me. And that's the that's the transactions imported at that point. So back into transactions, and you can see from 101 to the bottom there, that's the journals that we've just imported. Let's do another example, and probably the most common example as well of when people look at import and start importing transactions is direct debits and standing orders. So this is the file, this is what it looks like. So I might have these saved and each month, all I need to do, maybe I come in and change the dates and say, right, these are gonna be paid on such and such a date. I might knock knock the odd line out because maybe it, it doesn't go via direct debit in a, in a certain period. Well, but I can also add information in as well. So again, we've got another, we got another nine transactions this time round. So we got that PA on the end as well. So just again, just going back to whose question was it uh, about importing customer receipts? Uh, Brian, your query, can't do that one. So I couldn't import a PP for instance. It's gotta be a PA, it's gotta be a payment on account. So just gonna quickly import this one. So again, back to Sage, file, import. 
choose the audit trail transactions option. It's an Excel file. And it was that one. Everything's mapped for me. I'm going to come back to mapping in just a second. And then we can import. That's it done. So again, back into transactions, and you can see it's added those extra transactions in there. So in this case, from 108 all the way down to the bottom. Now those transactions, I can amend those just like any other transaction at that point as well. So I can highlight it, edit it, and I can make whatever amends. So if I, you know, if I have imported something in and I've maybe I'd forgot to change the date, I can still go and make that change. I can still delete the transaction if I needed to. Journal-wise as well, if I've imported some journals, if I go to edit that, as long as you've got a reference included in the import file, so in the in the reference column, it will group that together, and it will enable you to then edit the journal just as normal. Okay, back to my list of uh, files. Now I've got exactly the same information, but this time I've used my own file. So I'm going to show you what that one looks like. So I haven't used the template, but it's got exactly the same information in this time. So I've got different column headings this time. So this time it's not going to recognize those column headings because they're not spelled exactly the same as what they are in Sage. So I've just got TRAN for the transaction number, ACNO for the account number, NOM for the nominal code. So what I'll do is I'll just whiz through so you can see what that one looks like. And you'll notice this time I've got two tabs at the bottom as well. So essentially I've got two worksheets. I've got one called direct debits and I've got one just called test. The reason I've done that is because the standard templates, they don't have those. So you'll just have the one worksheet by default on those. I'll show you how it, it makes a little difference there as well. So again, back into Sage, into file, import, Click next, audit trail transactions. And this time it's still an Excel file. So I'm just going to click browse. And it's this one here, direct debits, my own file. Now it does contain headings. If it didn't contain headings and I click next, on the mapping, it's going to say, right, your transaction type, it's in column. And I would need to know the column, the column letter. But mine does contain headings. And it also contains those two worksheets. So it gives me the choice. Which of those worksheets is your information on? So mine was on the direct debits worksheet. So I'm just going to click next. And then we need to complete the field mappings. So again, just coming back, this is the Sage field, so the transaction type, it's a required field. So I've got to specify from my import file, which column contains that information. So in my case, it's the TRAN column. For the account reference, which column contains that? Again, it's a required field. So, just need to specify it. The nominal account reference, which is called NOM in my case. Now department, if I click on this, I have included the department, but let's say I don't want to import that. I'll just leave it blank. It'll just pick up a default instead. Date, well, my column, it's probably the one that you would find is actually, it will map automatically because you've probably called your column date. If it was called something different, again, you just need to map that one. The reference I will import. I've used one. Details is correct. The net amount, just need to map that one. Tax code, well, I've actually called it tax code. And then finally, for tax amount, I've called it VAT. So all of the required fields are now mapped. You'll see there's loads that aren't, but there's loads of information that you can import against transactions. And then, now if this was something I was gonna get information from the same source time and time again, what I could do is save that mapping. 
and saves me having to select it each and every time. I could save it as a file. And if I was to import this file type again from the same source where it's going to have the same headings, I could just load that and it would it would put the mappings in place for me. I'm just going to click next, click import, does the passes, and then again it imports the transactions for me. So again, a little, little bit more. I suppose there's a little bit more to specify if you're using your own files. If you can use the Sage files, it makes it even easier. Right, okay, let's go back. What have we got next? Right, so hopefully that's given you a little bit of food for thought. And I can see you've got loads, some quite detailed questions as well coming through. So I'll, I'll crack on with the, the demos. I wanna show you what it looks like when things don't quite go according to plan next. Now, I'm just gonna quickly pop back to the slides just before we move on with that element of the demo. So I'm not ex expecting it always to go to plan for you, particularly when you first start. There'll be things where common things like you've maybe you've left the, the file, it's still open, like you're trying to import. Maybe it's got to go, again, go back to what Brian mentioned about sales receipts. You can't import an SR, but you can import an SA. So things like coming up with an error, it's an invalid transaction type, journals that don't balance. We get loads of questions on journals that don't balance when entering them manually within the software, never mind doing it via the import. So again, journals must balance, they must follow the same rules. And I also want to highlight a common query, which is if you've got a blank line in your file as well. Now there is a fab article within our help center. It's got all of the various errors listed. So if you've downloaded the handout today as well, that green button at the bottom there, that will actually should link you through. Uh, but easy enough to find, you would just go into the help center, search for import errors, and it'll find this article for you and all the, all the various errors that you're going to come across, they'll be find, uh, found for you. Right, so let's go and have a look at some of the, the, common, the common issues. And the first one I'm going to start with is this one here, where we've got an invalid transaction type. So let's open this one, just so I can show you what it looks like. So here we've got the same list of direct debits and payments that we looked at before, but I've got a PP transaction at the bottom. Now you can't import a PP, you need to import it as a PA. But let's look what happens when you try. So again, we've used the template on this one just to make it a little bit quicker. So file, import. Again, make sure you back up. Going to choose audit trail transactions browse for that file so it's this one it does contain headings the mapping is all done for me again make sure they're all mapped if you haven't mapped a certain certain a required field when you click next you'll get it'll warn you about that one so you need to map all of the required fields to before you can click next we then click import. This time it stops the import. So it's done pass one where it reads the information in your file, it validates it because it's found an error, it stops. So it's telling me error in record nine. Type illegal transaction type one error detected. So I'll just edit that import file. So one thing to bear in mind as well, particularly if you've got hundreds of transactions on your list, record nine in this case is on row 10. And that's because I've got headings at the top. So this one, PP, it's not allowed. I've got to change that if I want to import that transaction type. So I need to change it to a payment on account. We'll save the file. Now we'll need to close out of the import wizard. Just go through that one more time. Browse for my file. Oh, did it? Yeah, there it is. 
click next. All the mappings are done. Try and import that. And this time it imports it. So you can see it at the bottom here. It tells me that one's been imported. So common one to watch out for when you first start. Right, next one. Unbalanced journal. So again, I've looked at that salaries journal from earlier. Now, things like things like this, commonly, the mismatch in, in, in dates. So I've, I've had advanced the dates on this journal, but I've, I've purposely put a, a wrong date on this one here. So it's a month behind. Also, the values don't balance as well. So the debits and credits don't balance. So we'll close out of that one and show you what that looks like when you try to import. So into file, import. Again, we'll just quickly whiz through the, the wizard. Browse for the file. And then click imports. Again, password it reads and tries to validate the information it finds some errors so it's telling me error in record six it contributes to an un unbalanced journal on the 25th of the fourth and also debits exceed the credits by a certain amount and then obviously that that almost like that, that one error it's it's generating a number of errors because all of the other journals they they won't balance either now because of that I'll click edit import. I'll change the date. Now the values are still unbalanced at the moment. So, but I'm just going to save the changes. And we're going to go through the import again with the dates correct this time. Running a little bit slow there on mine today. And then just click next and then import. Now it still tells me it's unbalanced on this date, but it also it tells me that the credits exceed the debits by 437. So I essentially all I would need to do is have a look at that journal and find out what the problem is. So essentially in that Excel file, it doesn't balance. So again, it, when you're importing transactions, it just stops. It doesn't import the, any information at all if there are any errors found. Right, now the final tip I wanna quickly give you at this stage is this final one, something to watch out for. And it's where, what I've seen in the past is where people try to, maybe they'll build up their transactions and think, right, well, I'm gonna put all my bank payments together and they might come along and write, I'm going to insert a, another line and they'll fill in that information. And they've got sort of a blank line uh, in between the various sections just so they can easily, easily spot that. So in my case, I, I've ordered the transactions and I'll put gaps between the different transaction types. Now, when, when you're importing and the, and the import wizard gets to a blank line, it stops. It assumes that's the end of the file. So even though there's other information, so this is something to be aware of. So I'll just close out of this file and we'll go through and try and import that one. So we'll import again. And as you can see, it tells me these are the records that have been imported. So the BP transactions at the top, they're absolutely fine, but it's got to that blank line and then it just stops. It assumes that's the end of your data. So do watch out for that one. Right, a couple of questions coming through. Again, Jackie's picking most of those up. 
quick one from Alison there. Uh, currently, transactions can be edited. Can imported transactions be edited? So things like typos, if you've imported those as well. So absolutely. So I'll just quickly show you that one. So all of these transactions I've imported today could be anything. So if I highlight a, any transaction, click edit, I'm in the normal position where I could delete a transaction, I could amend a value, amend descriptions, etc. So absolutely. Journals as well. If you've imported journals, we mentioned that one earlier. Let me find some journals here. So there we've got some journals. When you import journals, they should be grouped together. So if you've made a mistake with the journal, maybe you've imported it, maybe you forgot to change the date, I could easily come in and change it to whatever, save the changes. So again, no real difference there. You can edit your transactions in exactly the same way. And again, I think that's answered your other question as well there, Alison. Okay, let's go back to the slides and if I can find the right button. And one, one final thing I want to quickly mention is the version 28.1, the enhancements that are coming soon to the import area. So two, two main changes. One is that your standard transactions can be grouped going forward. So you'd be aware of grouping such as likes of a, a bank payment, for instance. If you import a series of bank payments currently, they will all import a separate transaction. So what we would term as separate header transactions. Whereas if you, in the software, you've been entering, say, 10 bank payments, if they're consecutive, they're entered on the same screen, they've got the same date and reference, when you save that, by default, that would be grouped together. So when you get to your bank reconciliation, for instance, you would see that one transaction. Similar for invoices, you might have a, a 20 line invoice that you import. Currently, on 28.0 and every other available version, that would all import as separate transactions. Whereas on 28.1, you have this grouped option when you're importing it. So as long as the transactions meet the criteria, so they're consecutive on your spreadsheet, they're the same transaction type, they have the same date, same reference, it will group them together. So when you're looking at the likes of a, a customer activity, for instance, you would see the one, what's one sort of what you would term the header line for the full value of the invoice, but you still got the breakdown within it, should you need it. Also a few of you mentioned earlier on about charities. So let me just share my screen for one moment. So on the charity side, again, I'm using 28.1, so I've got the latest version installed today. So when I go through the import option, if I access the, the templates, and just access the audit trail template that we've been looking at and using today. What you've now got on the end is a fund column. So again, we get lots of feedback about this previously, uh, where historically, and what you've been able to do so far, you've been able to import your transactions, but if you wanted to allocate your, your transactions to funds, you would have then had to do that manually. So you can now import that that information along with your transaction information. So for charities, fingers crossed, that should be a, a, a bit of a, a time saver for you. Quite a bit of a time saver as well, if you've got, if you're importing hundreds of transactions. Again, version 28.1 coming soon. If anyone wants to see it in action, other than on these short webinars that we are running, myself and Jackie do run uh, regular sessions on 28.1. So if you want to come along and see what's coming, have a sneak peek before it is released. So you want to see the new uh, data management tool. Uh, the What else have we got? We've got changes to the uh, VAT process. New version, you can now set it to remember your logon details so that you're not having to log in each and every time. You can, If you've got multiple companies, you can have multiple companies open at the same time. So loads of enhancements, loads of fab features to save you some time, loads of Sage City uh, suggestions as well. So where our customers, our users have been saying, I wish it could do this. And I'm sure some of you will have 
uh, some suggestions off today. Get them submitted via Sage City. Let people vote on them. The more votes options get, the more likely they are to be included going forward. So over 22 of the suggestions from uh, the last six months that have been included in 28.1. You want to see that one in action get yourself signed up for one of our upcoming webinars so as i say we've we've been running that and they've proven very very popular feedback's been fab as well uh new topic wise uh next week actually tomorrow i'll say next week so tomorrow first of june two o'clock our normal new features uh slot we've got jackie taking over tomorrow running products and services so if you want to learn more about those setting up your records uh, might, I'm not sure if we're co covering import on that one, but potentially you could import your records as well for products and services. So we'll come along for that one. Purchase orders the following week. So if anyone's using the professional level of software and you want to see purchase orders an option uh, in action, I should say, or maybe you're not using that level of the software, but it, maybe it'd be something that you might be thinking, well, if I upgrade it, I could use purchase orders. If you just want to see it in action, get yourself signed up. The links are included on your follow-up email, which you receive in round about an hour's time. Right, now that brings us to the end of the demos. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna hang around and we'll try and pick up some uh, additional questions in just a moment. Uh, but if you're about to leave, many thanks for coming along uh, today. Hope you have enjoyed it. Hopefully it's given you some food for thought as well. So start thinking of those. And once you've once you've gone through import and you've 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 looked at it and understood what it can do, you'll be sat there and you'll be thinking, oh, I could have imported that. It'll save me time. And you'll start looking at these situations where maybe you, you one of your colleagues is giving you a list of expenses. Could that have been completed on an Excel spreadsheet, then provided to you? So you're not having to key that in. Or maybe most of the information is provided on an Excel spreadsheet, you fill in the blanks a lot quicker than sitting there keying all that information in manually. So I'm sure you'll start spotting those going forward, fingers crossed. Right, but thanks for your time. We appreciate you coming along. Uh, hopefully we'll see you on some other sessions as well. If you are wanting to hang around, just we'll hang around for another two or three minutes just to see if any questions do come through. I think Jackie's just about on top of all of them at the moment. Uh, so a couple of, couple of minutes, we'll just hang around, pick up any additional questions. But if you're leaving, thanks for coming along. Take care, stay safe. Watch out for your follow-up email. And as you leave today, there'll be a little survey pop-up. If you can take a minute to complete that, share with us any thoughts or feedback you have, ideas that you have, or maybe topics you'd like to see covered. If you can take a minute to complete that survey, it'd be greatly appreciated. Right, any additional questions, get them entered quickly. Uh, we'll try and pick up as many as we can. We've answered all of them that are there so far. Oh, I say we, the Royal Way, Jack, Jackie's been answering most of them. A uh, quick question from is it Estherina. I'll pick that one up. Estherina is just asking there, and if I just quickly share my screen. So Estherina is just asking, can you post invoices with projects to the import templates? So absolutely, yes, you can. So you've got the project reference and the cost code reference. So if you were entering a, a batch purchase invoice, for instance, you can include that information. Similar for other expenses as well. But any, anything like that, if you're not sure as well, remember how to access the, the templates. So just literally, you're going into File, into Import, clicking the link and then if you have a look at the relevant templates so we're looking at audit trail transactions today so remember that covers things like your bank payments your bank receipts uh you essentially the equivalent of your batch invoice or your batch batch credits and also journals so have a look at the template 
So if you're thinking, right, well, could I include the extra reference? Yes, the, the username, the project information. Have a look at the column headings, see what information is included. And that goes if you're importing records as well. Have a look at the maybe the customer template, see what you can import. Uh, Tim, you mentioned there the audit trail template. So the one I've used today, can I make that available? Uh, no. We, we're not able to share uh, files such as Excel files with you. But easy enough to key some information in. Right, I think the questions are drying up, so I think we'll we'll end the webinar at that point. So once again, many thanks for coming along. Take care, stay safe, and again, hopefully we'll see you on some future webinars. If you can complete, just spend a minute completing the little survey that pops up, be greatly appreciated. Many thanks. Hopefully we'll see you again.